All right, good to be back in the house of the Lord. We want to turn to the book of Philippians, chapter 1. It's a, it's a good study here, and Paul, uh, we see here, Paul is writing to the church here in verse 1. Of course, he wrote to many of the churches, and I notice uh, in, in his writings, he always uh, uh, wishes them that uh, uh, that they have peace and grace be unto all of them. And that this morning is something that we, as God's people, need to pray for and pray about, is to just continue to send peace our way and, and to encourage our hearts. Amen. Paul said in chapter 1, verse 1, Paul and Timothy, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Jesus Christ, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and the deacons. Now we see here that Paul is, is talking to the talking to the church, and he's saying, "Servants of Jesus Christ." And this morning, uh, if there ever was a time when we that are are saved and are trying to live in a way that would be pleasing to the Lord, that we need to be a closer servant to the Lord, and we have a need for a closer walk with Him because uh, the times are bad, the times are dangerous, and the times are. Uh, uh, are not good in, for Christians. So we want right. to we want to understand this morning that uh, what Paul is saying when he said here to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi. And of course, that 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 is uh, for all of the saints that we need to pray for, and the bishops and all the other churches. We need to pray for them, be in, in close contact with them, and let them know that we're praying for them and. For those like we mentioned here already that, that are sick, we want to pray for them and 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 be in their be in the Lord's will. But he said here, with the with the bishops and the deacons, of course, if if you wanted to, and you turn to Titus just a minute, we'll, we want to see something about this bishop uh, in Titus one, and let's look at uh, verse five. Titus 1 verse 5. For this cause I left, I left, for this cause left I thee and creep that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanton and ordained, elders in every city as I had appointed thee. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of writing or unruly, for a bishop must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angered, not given to wine, nor striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy temperance, holding fast the faithful word as he had been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gang slayers. Amen. And it goes on to tell about many unruly people, but here, back in our lesson, here he says here that 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 uh, he wants to talk with the bishops and the deacons. And of course, the deacons were uh, ones that helped with the uh, running of the church. But he's the preaching, the 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 pastors here is what he. Uh, is really bringing uh, this to in Titus. But now in verse 3 of our lesson, or verse 2, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see again, Paul is always, he's always coming to, to greet the churches even if he couldn't be there, if he wrote letters or if he come to see him, he's saying here, grace be unto you. Mm -hmm. And this grace, people, is something that so many of us uh, sometimes look at and, and say, well, grace, grace, you know. But we don't realize what what really the word grace is sometimes. And it it's uh, it's very important that we should uh, uh, study more on this and, 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 and know what we're saying, thinking about. But he said in verse 3 then, I thank my God on every remembrance of you. And again, here I want to ride that horse again, but the thing of this, we need to remember 
those that we have associated with. We need to remember those that are in different churches. Sometimes we fellowship with them or whatever. But he said, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. And, and we, have, we have brothers and sisters in other churches. And it's our duty as a Christian to pray for them. And Amen. Amen remember them and to uh, uh, tell others about them because listen they're living a, the life like we want to live too and so we we need others to pray for us and to remember us and to tell others about us that we might serve the Lord in a greater way and so always in verse 4 always in every prayer of mine for you all making requests with joy now, I want to read you some stuff here this morning in, in Romans 1.8. Romans 1, uh, verse 8. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayer and this this morning is so so important uh, you know for our brothers and our sisters and for Amen. us that we remember one another in prayer and, and it ain't one of these all bless 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 and let it go but be sincere about this thing because you know we have brothers this morning are out uh, trying to serve the Lord and, and they need our constant prayer and they need our help and we as as uh, uh, Christians here uh, sometimes we get a little bit discouraged sometimes but we need to pray for one another and encourage one another and say hey you know we got a good thing going and this Amen. people we have got a good thing going and it ain't no pretense or nothing but he said here in uh, verse uh, Nine, for God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in prayer and in love. I know, making request, if by any means, now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of, of God to come unto you. And so you see how Paul had it, a love for the other churches, and sometimes in, in his writings, or he said, I was hindered and I couldn't come to you. But the thing of it is, here he says, make a request if any, by any means, now at least I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come to you. And this, uh, again, is something that we need, we need to remember in our everyday prayer for those that are uh, going from church to church and those that are over in uh, other countries and, and hope to, and pray for them for a prosperous journey. You know, Brother Kraft and them has, has really had a journey and we need to remember him and, uh, and his family. Uh, and then verse, uh, verse 11, for I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end you may be established. And so our our desire, our earnest desire is to tell others, to tell our brothers and sisters of other churches, and all, hey, I've had a good month, it's been two or three months since I've seen you, and uh, I've been praying for you, and, and I know you've been praying for me, and we've had a, a wonderful time in our church. And encourage one another, because mm -hmm. I guarantee you, uh, those that are, are, that are not uh, serving the Lord, hey, when they get together and they uh, have their big hoo-yahs and all this, listen, they encourage one another, tell them, hey, I went down so-and-so and I got drunk down there and I went down here and I did this and I run over that. And, and listen, that's their encouragement mm. to others because, hey, they have a big life about it and say, hey, that's, that's, that's good living. But listen, we need to be on fire for the Lord and tell Amen. our brothers and sisters how good the Lord has been to us. And in my, I, 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 I've got to tell you this because it comes to my mind. Just that We went out yesterday and we were going up to the office and Larry's and we saw a rainbow. I have never, I mean, it was, and, and it, the Lord impressed me with this so much. And I thought, what a great miracle it was. And uh, we, we was going to call back telling 
uh, till dawn and learn to look at and see if they could see it. But we forgot our phone. But it was a beautifulness. It was a courteous. I mean, it was something that just touched you. Mm -hmm. And you think about you think about why that it's there, and uh, it's a reminder mm -hmm. to God. Uh, that the statement that he said, I'll never flood this earth again. And so there's so many things in God's word and, and we can use these things to encourage people just like that rainbow encouraged Donna, I mean, uh, Diane and me because Amen. listen, it was, it was, it was just, it was just something magnificent. But here, he said here in, in our in reading here, uh, he says, for I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end you may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. See, so uh, when we have the same faith and when we have uh, time to get together with other churches and other uh, uh, brothers and sisters, listen, we need to encourage one another and, and to express our desire to uh, uh, see them prosper and to uh, lead them in a way that would, uh, the Lord would lead them in a way that would be uh, uh, the right way. So here, here again, he says in verse 12, that is that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Now, I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oft time I purpose, here it is, to come unto you but was led hitherto that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am a debtor both to the Greek and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome also. So he's letting them know this morning, hey, I'm ready to come to you. I'm ready. And, and he knew Rome was a bad place, and uh, but anyway, he said, I'm, I'm glad to see you. I'm, I want you to know that I'm going to be glad to see you. So back in our lesson again, let's, uh, in verse uh, uh, 5 of the Philippians 1, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. So even as it is meant for me or meant for me to thank this of you all because I have you in my heart inasmuch as both in my bonds or chains, whatever the case might be, and in the defense of the confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. Amen. And so, uh, it's just grace, 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 and, and uh, uh, we need to we need to uh, be closer to the Lord that we might understand the word grace closer. God in verse eight. God for God is my record. How greatly I long after you all in the vows or love of Jesus Christ. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgments. And so he is, he is writing this letter to the, the church here and he's saying, this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge. In other words, study to show yourself approved and I can get this Amen. this. Uh, rightly dividing the word, and we this morning, this should be this should be our our sidekick all the time when we when we sit down somewhere. We should have an opportunity to read some of it and to rehearse some of it and to make notes of it. Because listen, I have found out lately that I can get a blessing, and I can if I don't write it down, people, I forget what book of the Bible it's in, which is a which is shame, but, but it's that way with me anymore. And, and so I write down about everything that I read that I want to remember, and then I can go back and refresh my memory mm -hmm. and over and over. And this is what he's talking about here. He says that, <clears throat> uh, and this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. Verse 10 that you may approve things that are excellent or 
are really uh, that really matter that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. And here he's just praying for them, telling them that he's hoping that they will stay in a condition, stay close to the Lord, where that uh, they will make it through their life. And he says uh, uh, that you may, may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. And of course, uh, we know that that's what that's what we we need to shoot for. It needs to be our goal this morning is to live in a way that would be pleasing to the Lord and and be sincere in this uh, desire to live for Him. Because He says in verse eleven, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, Amen. unto the glory and praise of God. So fill with the fruits of righteousness and that this morning uh it, it is a, a bearing situation and a holding situation but being filled with it uh and you can you can uh, take it either way but he's always wanting uh the fruit that uh, that you produce to be up for jesus christ and unto the glory and praise of god now in verse 12 but I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happen unto me have fallen. Now, this fallen means to uh, turn out or, or uh, uh, rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. And what he's saying Amen. here this morning, all of his all of his troubles and his trials and his uh, efforts that he uh, wanted to come see other people, uh, churches and all, and he couldn't make it at the time and how the devil had hindered him. But he says, but I would, you should understand, brethren, that the things which happen unto me have fallen or uh, uh, out rather unto the furtherance of the, uh, of the gospel. And so he's saying these interferences that have happened to me, listen, I didn't get weak by them, but I got strong by them. Amen. And the thing here this morning is that we need to take this in consideration. Uh, uh, when it seems like that everything that you try to do or touch or do this goes wrong, this is an encouragement to have patience. This patience will give you strength to uh, continue on serving the Lord because uh, the Lord uh, knows what's going on with you. And sometimes he lets these things kind of ease on into you to kind of give you a little bit more patience and strength. And this is what Paul was saying here. He says, that they have encouraged me, these, these things that, that are, are hindering me. He knows that the devil is trying to fight at him. And he's saying, hey, because he's fighting me, I'm doing something good. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way with us this morning when the devil goes to hinderness or uh, when our flesh goes to hinderness. Hey, you take, you take notice of that because that is because that you're trying to serve the Lord. Amen. Trying to, to, trying to be a blessing to someone. And, you know, even even uh, uh, anything, anything that you want to do for someone, well, they're able to do it yourself or they can do this or they can do that. But the thing of it is, you're not producing any fruit when you let right. that get you down. And so you need to produce some, that fruit. So he said here, he says here, uh, that the things which happen unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. And so uh, he, uh, this fall, and I got it wrote down here, turned out. It's turned out to be the thing that I needed to do. And so that in verse 13, so that my bond, bonds or my uh, uh, chains or whatever he uh, was using there, so that my bonds in Christ are manifested or uh, exalted in all the palaces and in all the other places. And so what his, his putting in prison, throwing in prison or this and all, he says, hey, it's, it's been all right because it's furthered my, my, my work and helped you know, other places. And he said, it's manifested in the, all the palaces and in all the other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident by my bonds are much more bold 
to speak the word without fear. And so this is why he's saying this about his bonds and his suffering and his turmoils. He says, and many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident because they had seen the things that Paul was, was, was suffering and they they took it to heart and they, they are serving the Lord closer because they see Paul. And listen, that sometimes is the same way with us this morning. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have these problems, these earthly problems and, and fleshly problems or spiritual problems. Listen, if we can if we can face them and, and keep going, it's an encouragement. Uh, you know, even when when uh, uh, people get sick. Uh, and, and, and you know they, 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 they're getting close to death and all this and you see uh, a good strong uh, a Christian laying there or something you get, you get, you get confidence in that Amen. and, and, and it, it makes you to want to get closer to the Lord because you don't know when you're going to have this, uh, uh, this problem or some of the problem and so it's an encouragement and that's what Paul is saying here this morning when he says here so that my bonds in Christ are manifested and in all the palaces and that's when he was brought before the kings and all this and in all the other places <clears throat> and many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident by my bonds are much more bold to speak the word without fear and <clears throat> even even in witnessing even in witnessing, the more that you can witness and the more that you can tell the, the people the truth about the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done for you, he's saying here that they did it much more because they seen him doing it Amen. and doing it without fear. And so here, some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife and some also of goodwill. The one preach Christ of contention not sincerely supposing to add afflictions to my bond and so he was he was uh, 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 bad enough in Paul and he's saying here the one preached Christ of contention not sincerity and so supposing to add affliction to my bond but the other of love knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel Amen. and hey uh, uh, you know uh, this word set, I, I seen it as appointed, and he says here, he says, I am appointed uh, to, to this, this defense uh, 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 of Jesus Christ, and of the gospel. When then, notwithstanding, every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, I will rejoice. Amen. And, and I understand, I understand some of these false, these false denominations and they, they're preaching uh, Christ and they're doing it in a false way. Paul says here that God will get glory out of this false preaching even even though it's wrong and it's, it's not written and they're not preaching according to the Bible. But listen, when you bring a, uh, when you, when somebody else sees that and knows that that's false teaching, then that makes them stronger and wants to tell others about how that they are misleading in the Bible. And so he's saying there they, they get strength through it. And so he says in verse 19, for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayers and the supply of the saints of Jesus Christ according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed but that in all boldness as always so now also Christ shall manifest in my body whether it be by life or death mm -hmm. now Paul he says that uh, that he would magnify his body whether by life or death, then he goes on to say this, for to me to live is Christ. And that's the reason why he said what he did about magnifying my body. He says, for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Amen. Now, for him to live, he's going to explain this to you, but if I live in the flesh, 
this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I know not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. And so he gives the answer here, which is to die or to live. And if he lives, he's going to preach the gospel. He's going to tell you about Jesus Christ. And if he dies, listen, he's going to be with the Father. And and so he said, it's 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 he he he, he says, I shall choose. I, I know not, for I am in the street between two, having desire, having a desire to depart. And Paul's saying here, I got, I have, I got a desire to die. And of course, you know, uh, uh, over in Second Timothy, he says, uh, I finished my course. I Amen. Faith. And uh, Paul, Paul was seeing this thing, and he says, here, desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And Paul, thinking about the church that he was writing to, or the churches that he was uh, uh, writing to, he says, it's, it's better for me to stay here and to suffer this persecution for your sake. Because one day, I know where I'm going. I'm going to be with the Lord, what Paul says. Uh, and so he says in verse 25, and having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and joy and faith. And so he's, he's saying, hey, I know if I stay here, you're going to progress and you're going to, you're going to serve the Lord. And so he says, it's better for me to stay here and suffer this persecution. And so when we, when we get down and out sometimes, say, well, I'd be better off dead. Mm -hmm. Listen. Don't let the devil don't let the devil get that thought in your mind because hey, as long as the Lord wants you to stay here, you have an option. Uh, uh, you can, I mean, I have a desire to to tell other people about uh, what they need to hear. Amen. And, uh, and so, uh, Paul, Paul was uh, uh, he was ready to go, but only here he says. Notice there now in verse 26 that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. So they, he says that they're going to rejoice for uh, seeing him come again. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. That whether I come and see you or else be absent. I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Amen. In nothing and in nothing or no way ter terrified by your adversary, which is to them an evident token or a proof of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. For to you... It is given in the, the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. Having the same conflict which he saw in me and now bear here, here to be in me. And so he says here, if there be any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship and we need this only of the spirit of any bow or love and mercy fulfill ye my joy that ye be like minded having the same love being of one accord one mind and let nothing be done through strife or vainglory but the lowliness of mind that each esteem others better than themselves Amen. And that's this morning what we need to do is esteem others better than ourselves pray for them uh, pray for them and pray that they'll pray for us and uh, uh, I think that's what Paul is trying to get across to the, the church there this morning. So that's uh, that's this lesson for this day. And I hope that uh, everyone got something other there that they can work on and study on. And those that are watching us uh, on the computer, I hope that it'll help them too. So y'all pray for us and thank you so much for listening. Amen.